Hey everyone, welcome back to Stay Positive. Hope you guys are still hanging in there. Um, I had a fun tip to throw out there at the top of the episode. This one's not an ad, but I was mentioning this to a friend and realized maybe not everyone knows about um, how you can rent audiobooks from your local library via an app like Overdrive. That's the one I use. I think there might be others out there, but basically if you have your library card on you or you can get like a digital library card um, typically online, I think for most public libraries out there, uh, you can just type that into your OverDrive app and then voila, you can basically rent any audiobook that's available. Let's get right into today's guest. I'm very excited. This guest is a comedian. You might've seen her on Jimmy Kimmel or she recently did the CBS showcase uh, for comedy. So yeah, she's amazing. Check her out. And this is comedian Danielle Perez. And I love your lovely, um, colorful backdrop. This is definitely the most uh, set-designed person I've ever interviewed. <laughs> That's because my amazing roommate, Beyonce, uh, set-designed it for me. Uh, oh, wow. I was creating content. Uh, yes, it's <laughs> Even really in a pandemic. Great. Good. But no, I'm really lucky. Both my roommates are filmmakers. So Pat got it, got shot it. me with his camera, and G created this little influencer Ooh. background. <gasps> So yeah, it's it great. So much like to I look at. Have a nice home. <laughs> I mean, I can show you the reality, but it's bad. <laughs> I mean, if you're ready, you street. know. But I, for now, I can just believe that you live in like a colorful space with like a cute little pink Polaroid camera and some nail polish and you yeah, know, that I use very, all the time. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it's not like these are my reality. Very natural. Oh yeah, I was admiring your nails earlier. I feel like I. How I tell time now, just the grow out. So, okay, that's what's going on. <laughs> that's what's I, I mean, you know, it could be the style. <laughs> You're just more about the tips, not about the base, you know? Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry, Megan Trainer, we're about the tips, not the Right, base, right. Not that that's trouble. what that song was definitely about. <laughs> um, big fan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I I feel like there's so many things that, you know, we're learning. We don't need to have perfect nails or really do much beyond just hanging at home yeah um, <laughs> I'm wearing leggings today which oh, is yes, huge nice. I showered big. I'm trying congrats <laughs> that's great your hair looks Thank very you. clean mm-hmm. my hair looks it's really so you you know me I'm always in a, with a blowout this is like my hair is naturally very curly cool it's a uh-huh. lot of hair it's a lot to work with. And so I'm getting to know my natural hair in quarantine. And it's been a journey. It's like this new person that I haven't interacted a lot with. They are moody. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Take up a lot Learning. of space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I started it. I'm like, well, I've got the time and I'm going to be here for a while. So I started this. There's a whole Reddit called Gir- Curly Girl Hair. And it's all about hair care for women with curly hair women and men whoever any kind of person but they have like this method there is like a multi-page list of approved products oh wow Endorsement. and even one for international <laughs> curly hairs oh, okay yeah yeah it's a pretty wild so they're very particular about the method and technique cool so i'm still waiting for it to dry still sweet see how that kind of yeah. plays out, I guess. Well, so are you like contributing as well? Or is it mainly like you're reading people's posts or? Yeah, the, I'm reading because uh-huh. I'm cool. new to it. Like you have to kind of start in a very specific way. <laughs> you do right, right, right. Uh, like a really deep wash with um, a shampoo that does have sulfates. Oh, interesting. Because you yeah, know, like the say, shampoo now, sulfate free is like. I do see a lot deal. of that advertised. Yeah, people yeah. Are like no sulfates in here. I'm like, all right. I uh, didn't know they were in there anyway, but <laughs> sulfates are in there. They're abundant. The thing is, yeah. okay, and this is chemistry, and Ooh, okay. I am not I'm a ready. chemistry major, but <laughs> sulfates are the only thing that can like clean and strip away silicones. Oh, okay. And so if like your hair care product, a lot of just product has silicone. So we, if we want to start with a clean base, we got to do that sulfate heavy wash and then I never see, do it yeah. again. Oh, okay. And then, then from there on out, it's like sulfate fee and, and silicone free. 
exciting. Wow. Yeah, because I think what? I have silicones Riveting. in like, this thing <laughs> that I put. No, I mean, listen, these are things we have to learn now because we don't have people who are experts to help us. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, um, I didn't go to school for this. I'm not a nail technician. I'm not a beautician. I don't have the training. I have infinite time. But I don't have infinite right. skill. Well, we have to now, I guess we have to be our own like small town in our own homes, you know, like we have to be the doctor, <laughs> the baker, and the, the butcher, yeah, yeah, the butcher, <laughs> the eggmonger. Yeah, yeah. We're all exactly. Of it. Um, I am baking bread. I got a kitchen right. So mixer. you know, I broke down. Oh, you did. <laughs> I did, but I got it at a that's really great good price. Wait, what a KitchenAid? That's like the nice one, right? The KitchenAid. Well, I'm, uh-huh. I mean, I feel like it's the, the standard, it's the, like this, the one you yeah. see that's really pretty, right. good for kitchens, good for kitchens. <laughs> Hence KitchenAid. KitchenAid. Um, and she's white. Her name is Karen. Uh. <laughs> does she? Uh, where does she land in the Karen debate? <laughs> Hopefully, on the right side. You know, it's she's good to have, right have appliances with good politics. Um, <laughs> her name is Karen, and she doesn't think her name is a slur. <laughs> good. You know. She's one of the good ones, I think. That's what I'm hearing. Um, she will not refer to herself as a good one. She will use her privilege to right, right. uplift She's other aware. voices. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know. Wow, yeah. Get this KitchenAid. <laughs> her own Twitter <laughs> handle. Um, so does she... Uh, oh God, what is so you've made bread answer. with her. I yeah. have. I've made, mm-hmm. I've made um, multiple focaccia loaves. Wow. With wow. rosemary and red onion. I've made, apparently, Macaroni Grill is known for their rosemary bread. People really fuck heavy with their rosemary bread. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. And I made some of that. I found a dupe recipe. (laughs) And then I made this, like, insane loaf. It was, I was mad at it by the end of it because it was so labor intensive. But it is, like, this really decoratively shaped loaf that has... Olives, garlic, Parmesan cheese, and some wow. dried tomatoes. It's That's really intricate. fucking tasty. Oh. It is intricate. And then there's like a whole, you have to like scatter it across the loaf, roll it up, then cut it, then shape it in this weird oh, S that's a figure eight. It was, I was Whoa. so mad at this uh-huh. bread when I was done. I was like, this is so much work. <laughs> yeah. And then did it come out like an, uh, an eight or did it, was that just part of the process i can show you the picture of what it's supposed to come out it came out like mm. a sloppy s nice you know just like a lazy s, just like an s <laughs> that's, that's what they call me couch. you know yeah yeah that's great <laughs> <laughs> easy a and lazy s <laughs> <laughs> great sounds like my kind of bread um but that's like intense i feel like i still tasty. haven't gotten into the baking thing i did buy a no. hand mixer but just like a like it's an immersion blender. immersion blender. Yeah, yeah, that doubles as like a mixer too, but it's just like one little whisk guy because you can like change you, out the oh, bottom. You, oh, yeah, okay. but it's like a motor. Got you can it. Put the whisk on. I have an put, immersion blender. Oh yeah, I like. I haven't those. used mine yet for blending. I used it as a whisk, but oh. I hear it's good for soups. What have you been whisking up? Well, listen, no, I just made uh, a really <laughs> disgusting pancake. I was trying to get a recipe, you know, I got an inspiration from a friend when she was like, oh, there's these things called like souffle pancakes that oh, get yes. stacked really high. And so I was like, mm-hmm. okay, awesome. So I got like really into it one morning and I didn't have like baking powder. So that's the one. Oh, Maybe I needed that. Because then need I went through that. <laughs> I went through the whole thing and then I was like, they came out like scrambled eggs. It was still delicious, but it looked terrible. And, you know, it wasn't a circle. And yeah, it was just like a, it was a, it was a laugh. It was a laugh, but I still ate You're it. like, and is it a pancake? Cream. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. You know, we, we're all on board with that. But, um, but I used a whisk. So, you know, I had to break it in somehow. Um, yeah. And then hopefully, you know, I'll get baking powder someday. Get the baking powder. Yeah. We can get you some baking powder. <laughs> Actually, my first loaf, the first loaf I made in my stand mixer was a focaccia. And I was getting really impatient with the yeast. Like I, I had gotten active dry yeast. Mm-hmm. And I was like um, texting with my friend who loves to bake, a very experienced baker. And I'm like, is it fine? And I took a picture 
And then I just didn't even wait for her to respond. I was like, it's fine. And then I just, like, kept ahead anyway. And she's like, give it 15 more minutes. I was oh, like, no. well, I like... already started adding other things in. Like, I would About ask that. her for questions. Like, is this right? And then she would respond. But I had already just barreled through to the next step. I was like, I'm sure. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I would do as well. Like, like you know, nobody has time. Fine. Yeah, you're yeah, already I'm in like, making mode. I just want to use it. I know. I what are you going to do? It. I know. What are you going to do? Let it just, you know, wait till the perfect moment? You don't yeah. got time for that. You, um, use it. you get excited. Make yeah. um, soup with the immersion blender. I like okay. to, um, mm-hmm. Martha Stewart has a really easy and delicious tomato basil soup. Ooh. Very simple. All you need is butter, onions, salt and pepper, got and um, cans of whole plum tomatoes. Oh, okay. A little basil, maybe a little cream if you're feeling adventurous, Whoa, and chicken uh-huh. stock. Okay. And it's yeah, very that's easy, all manageable and it's ingredients. so good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'll yeah, send it to I'm, you. I'm definitely looking for, yeah, soup, thanks. soup recipes, I feel like, because, you know, it is getting warmer now, but I feel like just anything that I can try that's not my usual, you know, I have some go-tos, but mm-hmm. they've gotten tired because that's all we're doing these days. Um, all we're doing. We're can't just splice doing it up with a little over and over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like right. on an the endless meeting. loop. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I can only make uh, lemon chicken peel off so many times, but I, I do love it. delicious. Um, it's good, you know. Uh, it was one of those, <laughs> you know, things. I always have chicken and rice around and like as long as I have lemons and stuff, you know. That's wonderful. It's I doable. have a lemon tree. If oh, nice. Lemons. I got a you lemon know, tree. We actually do have a lemon tree now. Which Ooh. is a new development. Um, Wait, but you yeah. guys got a tree? Well, so we kind of moved recently. So I, was, I wasn't I was always here until maybe like January. And mm. then um, our place has a tree, which is good. Kind of on time. <laughs> that lemon tree. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Isn't it such a luxury now? Now we know the bounty of having your own fruit, apparently. Yeah. I'm trying to regrow things in water. Oh, yes. Like a little onions, hydroponics. Oh, leeks. yes. Leeks. Leeks, that's big. I have. They are big. Those. My leeks are doing okay. They're coming mm-hmm. along. They're leeks are just very big vegetables. I was yeah, ambitious, yeah, that's I tough. think, with I me, mean, but they're doing yeah. all right. Big risk, big reward. You know, you have yeah. leeks for days. I got excited. I was like, my, my roommate was like, "You can um, grow garlic in water." And I was like, "Really? Really?" And then I looked it up online. We watched a YouTube video, and we're like, "Oh, this is." this is easy. You just put it in the water. Look at them. That's great. And then the man goes, and then you just, you put it in the dirt and you cover it with dirt and you wait six to seven months. And I was like, I'm out. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, thank six you. to seven months. That's <laughs> adorable. Like, That's hilarious <laughs> that you think I'm going <laughs> to water this thing <laughs> every oh, day no. for yeah. six to seven months. <laughs> for like one. And then become like a bulb. <laughs> You gotta be joking, oh, me. Oh wow, yes, you know. <laughs> so we learn about how agriculture actually works. And yeah, it's then fascinating. You laughed and laughed. <laughs> oh wow, yeah, that's ambitious. I mean, I respect it. Um, yeah, my sister does a lot of gardening, but really, I, yeah, I mean, and it's a lot. It's a lot. She actually just told me today that a bird ate her big blueberry that she's really waiting on. So it's a heartbreak sometimes, you know? Imagine growing that garlic for six to seven months and then some gopher comes by and gobbles it up. I couldn't. I would be, I would be like Faye Dunaway in (laughs) Mommy Dearest. I can imagine. Just (laughs) screaming and going, I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the dirt. Like, yes, yes. I mean. Losing my mind. Like, bring me the axe, Christina. Bring me. Like, just destroying my raised beds with an axe. Just live it. I would, I would hand you that axe. Yeah, that's fair. That's definitely the, uh, that's the only way to respond, I think. Um, yeah. In a normal way. And just way. put like a sign, like gophers will be shot on site. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those guys, they're crazy. Um, well, I'm really getting seen... really bold right now. I, th- I think. You're right. I think nature's. Have you seen any? We got it. It's your time. 
<laughs> You're thriving. Okay. <laughs> we can. <laughs> Mother Earth yeah. said hot girl summer for me. <laughs> She's out here wild. <laughs> That's true. Some at least somebody's gonna have it. Did have you seen any uh, crazy wildlife through the window? I don't know how <laughs> I've been seeing eagles. Like wow. just flying. And I'm like, okay, okay, all right. We get it. Show up We're in show America. Out. Yeah, just taking to the sky. Wow. Okay, birds of prey. You know, you gotta birds of prey gotta... out here. Coyotes, just you know, just mm, walking the streets. They're hanging yeah. out. Yeah, um, yeah. I've I, we've had like a lot of um, crows and stuff. I think, mm. which are always very spooky. I always feel like crows are very. It's this time for the horror movie they to begin. Faces. Oof, facial recognition birds. It's not not okay. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but yeah, you know. So uh, you know, aside from quarantine fun, I guess I want to get into <laughs> you and I mean the fact that uh, well, we met as a as brainstormers writers on um, right. a cool a brain trust. Yeah, 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 the brain zone, the room of Shark Tank. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> think Tank whatever it's called, um, for Jamie Lee's upcoming Netflix show that will hopefully come out at some point. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, reality show. I don't know. It's It has to do with stuff. Unscripted. Yeah, yeah except for, you know, they still need Except writers. for the stuff that we wrote, you yeah, know, the ideas yeah. we came up with. Exactly. <laughs> you know, um, word for word. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and, and you're obviously a stand-up comedian, so we know each other through that as well. But how are you, I mean, it kind of goes back to quarantine stuff, but what do you like about comedy? What, what about now is, is kind of either helping you through that is comedy or reviving your faith in comedy? Things that are reviving my faith in comedy, honestly. All. <laughs> right. Um, I know just seeing like my friends have fun on the internet. I feel like we're in a funny place because like both of us are stand-ups right and that's like such a specific kind of art form and it like happens in real life in public (laughs) in spaces where people gather and you have that immediate feedback and audience reaction and you play with the tension in the room and the people in the room and that all leads to what's happening on stage and virtually shows are (laughs) very different it's just a very different experience it's 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 not stand up the way like I remember stand up which is fine it's its own thing but I feel like stand-ups can be very stuck up about comedy Mm -hmm. you know we can be very like well they're that's great they do sketches but they're not a (laughs) (laughs) stand-up well you know she's really more of an improviser (laughs) Yeah, it's trying just, to like, really split hairs. And, yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, she's she she just like writes on TV. She's not like really a stand up. <laughs> they right. like just booked her because she like writes on that show. Like, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> I, I feel like that's, yeah. it's a, huge a very thing you hear stand all the time. up <laughs> energy. Mm-hmm. But I'm seeing now a lot of my friends just take risks with the internet and be funny and silly and just have fun and create like silly dumb videos and TikToks and they're not being so precious about the art form. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I think before like if you were going to do a web series or take the time to like make a sketch, like there was a lot of um, just – you're very precious about it because it's well it's going out on the internet the internet's forever and people are going to see it and judge me based on this thing and so it has to be perfect and now it's like we're all in quarantine everyone's just trying to blow off steam and have fun and fuck it I have an iPhone and (laughs) a million hours to myself in my room right I'll just make something that amuses me and I find it amusing as well yeah, no, that's so true. I feel like the the whole excuse that's like, oh, well, I don't do that is like out the window because obviously you got to do something if you yeah. want to have that outlet. And uh, now at least there's sort of a safety net of like, well, I had to do it. So sorry, it wasn't 100% perfect. But yeah, I think like everyone kind nice. of just uh-huh. I feel like there's like a collective like grace period or like 
curve that we're like Mm-mm. ingesting content with that yeah. is made right now where it's like well we know like you're by yourself you're in your house Ah, eh, fuck it like, yeah, we're just yeah. making stuff we're just truly making stuff because we need to and <laughs> there aren't any other options left right yeah i i really have gotten into watching a lot of tiktoks and stuff oh yeah as much as like you know still learning like i don't i haven't really gotten into making them because i think it's still kind of like oh i don't know what i do you know i'll throw up something here and there but really like watching them is kind of fun because it's such a i'm like man people are funny like out there like everywhere yeah and like you got you got some you know all sorts of I guess you're getting fed what you like watching. So I feel like a lot of the things I'm getting are like silly and, you know, I I like that kind of stupid stuff where there's a twist or whatever and then it keeps you watching. So then you're like, like, okay, I watched the whole thing and gave you a view, you know. Um, But I also am, yeah, I'm impressed with like how creative people are given just like, you know, your front facing camera and you can have a sound or not or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. But it's it's kind of, um, it's cool. And like all mm -hmm. all the like, you know, silly challenges and stuff, you know, like the Megan the Stallion dance and then like <laughs> yeah, that yeah. woman who did the Carol Baskin one. Oh, as, what, what is that as one? Joe Exotic. Oh, wow. She's like, okay. Carol Baskin. Oh, killed her right. Husband. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I have seen that. I was like, this is just <laughs> Don't meshing tell me so many trends. It happened. <laughs> Classic. Did you watch all of uh, Tiger King? Oh, my God. Obsessed. <laughs> still thinking about it it's uh it was it lived up to the hype i was like you know i mean you know there's a certain part of me that with all the content that's out it's like okay i mean are we just bored or is it really good and then it's like oh this was this was good television (laughs) it's such good television and i feel like it truly it was like the perfect like early quarantine show because it was I feel like the only thing that could truly live up to how insane the times we're living in are that it could just take my mind away from that sure various you know like I could freak about out about how insane these people are in this (laughs) ecosystem of like (laughs) exotic tiger and animal um, (laughs) rings and (laughs) farming is (laughs) that's so true It, it was very you know like everything I watched for a minute there was sort of like ugh. I mean this is like Sure, they've got those problems, but like we got problems too, you know, like they don't even know what the world's going to be like. But then that one was just like, whoa, this is not even near like this planet. Right? Yeah. It's like, this isn't real. Like, like these people, this is. This yeah. Is, I don't know what's going like, on over there, so, but like, do they like, even know? Gay people, like polygamy, amputations, like. <laughs> Right, yeah. There was Husbands just disappearing. Of the big cats, it was, just, it was yes. so uh-huh. much like Florida cults. Just yeah, so insane. Yeah, a lot <laughs> packed into one, uh, you know, a few characters. Truly. <laughs> um, but yeah, and it also made me feel like as, you know, creating stuff, it's also like, I don't know if we need to write anything else because I think real life might have covered it. <laughs> Real life might be enough. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I know you really love reality shows and, and things like that because we kind of talked a little bit about it back when we were, you know, right, unscripting yeah. one. <laughs> Not scripting it. No. Um, but yeah, and the fact that, uh, I, I mean, I know you talked about 90 Day Fiance. Is that correct? Oh, Is that yeah. One that you um, like? I like 90. Uh-huh. Well, I need to watch the new season because I mean, everyone. I, I'm, yeah, I haven't seen it either. I'm, you okay have you seen the like images though this guy named like i think like big ed or something you know i saw a neck (laughs) no i saw a tiktok about him and i just didn't know who that was but then i saw the hashtag 90 day fiance so it's like like the stringy hair Mm, interesting he looks like um you know like the egg that like sanrio egg that is lazy gudetama Yes. No, I have two stuffed Goudet Thomas in the other room right there. Big fan. <laughs> huge fan. Lazy egg. Huge fan. Big fan. You got it. You got it. <laughs> I would say one fun fact about Goudet Thomas, like probably only maybe a couple weeks before, you know, LA started locking down, Goudet Thomas had like a big um, meet and greet like in little Tokyo. Um, and, you know, 
I was like jokingly with my friends like we should go to this you can meet the creator you can buy discounted items you can meet a Gudetama in like a suit and um we went and there was a line all the way like three hour line we couldn't even get in it was like okay maybe we'll just go eat dinner because this is um unmanageable that's how popular that dang thing oh, is. yeah it's huge yeah <laughs> and you know and then you know we can't do anything like that anymore but those were the times you know gathering for good day that was a time and place man that like hearing that line and how big it was that like stresses me out sure. <laughs> now the lines are for testing apparently. <laughs> you know groceries the other good day tama costco yeah <laughs> gotta get them <laughs> Um, but Big Ed looks like Gudetama. That's quite a compliment. Like when Gudetama's just like in his like egg white mm-hmm. and just oh, like that. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Kind of it's like a specific kind of, kind of coming out. <laughs> yeah, but Big Ed is Fascinating. horrifying. Um, yeah, he um, his fiance is from I think the Philippines, mm-hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> They have sex the first night, which horrifying. Um, he in the camera <laughs> interview, he goes, you know, she was a little shy at first, but then she had some champagne. She really liked the champagne. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! Uh oh! <laughs> yeah! Yikes! Did we just? So they show them in the morning in bed. Oh, wow. And he he's like cutting to the interview like last night was amazing. Like we did it. You know, like he's just like such a creep and gross. And then he looks at his fiance and goes, Your legs look like mine. And she just looks at him blanky and he's like, If I have just a request, could you shave your legs? And it's he like this dares. Oh, toad no. of a man, this no-necked, stringy-haired toad of a man. <laughs> I mean, I, I expect it was, it no was less like from unbelievable. Big Ed. It like blew my mind. And then she just was looking at him like, no. And he's yeah. like, Geesh. <laughs> Deal breaker. <laughs> Yeah, she could deal with the stringy hair. She could deal with the no neck, but don't tell her to change her body. It truly was. It blew. I was like, Uh this man, just the all the like. I mean, they exist. That's crazy. Ninety Day Fiance man. So I gotta catch up with Big Ed because he is crazy. But he apparently goes to the Philippines and he doesn't do well. He does not do well out there. <laughs> Good. I, I think, yeah, that's the real test. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I guess it's a, I don't know. What, what do you, what is it about reality shows that you think you're drawn to? I think I'm drawn to, I'm drawn to people trying to present themselves as something that they clearly are not. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean like with the Real Housewives up until Beverly Hills like Beverly Hills was like kind of the first really like well they're actually really rich but even still there are some Real Housewives on Beverly Hills and aren't that rich <laughs> but you know there's this like artifice that <laughs> my lifestyle right. <laughs> of course like these are people that are so delusional that they are impressive just for existing yeah but it's like usually people that are of that like of real means like that are not trying to do reality TV. sure sure that's yeah <laughs> it's a certain specific kind of like person lifestyle type um but i never yeah i never really thought about that aspect of it of like kind of seeing the facade for what it is and i know when we were working together like you had a good eye for, you know, some of these people who they cast who are like real people and kind of deciphering like a huge part of that world is really deciphering like, okay, this is what they're trying to say in their video to camera when they're like, hi, I'm so-and-so new, you know, like it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, And then 
really deciphering like, okay, but probably what they're trying to do is, you know, boost their music career or something like that. Like that's, I, yeah. I was a big bachelor, bachelorette person for a while, mm -hmm. even though this past season, I was so like, ugh, it was just like so like, ah, you know, frustrating kind of the way that they drag you along and the guy was terrible and it was just a disaster. What's the appeal <laughs> about The Bachelor, Bachelorette? Because that's one that I, and granted I tried watching it a long time ago and I was like, this is, I don't, I don't like cool. it. Yeah, no, and I kind of agree with you because <laughs> it, it felt like it wasted my uh, life when I was watching it. But yeah, I've been kind of, I watched it quite, you know, kind of, I think I saw like the first season when it first came out. It's obviously evolved a lot since then and there's been like 50,000 seasons. But um, man, I think the appeal is, you know, I get to kind of tell myself because, you know, a few friends who watch it too, we get to kind of tell ourselves, oh, we're watching it ironically. We're not yeah, really, yeah. you know, we know <laughs> this is a reality show. They don't actually believe in we're love. These are all like, yeah, they're all like 23 year olds with Instagrams and the way that it's turned into, you know, a <laughs> such a pipeline for Instagram influencers. So, you know, you can kind of tell, okay, she's really beautiful. So she can probably turn this into like selling clothing or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, so there's a little Follow bit of her that. for a Fashion Nova discount code. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Hashtag, yeah. Uh, and so I think that's, kind of part of the fun is like okay is this person here for the right reasons yeah Classic I love that. Line. are they here for the right, right reasons, reasons. And it's like, like they're on how, reality tv no one's here for the right reasons. honestly if they're I there for that. the right reasons that's psychotic you know <laughs> that's insane this is terrible get out get right out that's now. not the right way ever to find love <laughs> like that's a real roundabout way <laughs> and you'll end up probably you know getting sucked into a terrible situation so anyway yeah I would say there's a little bit of the trying to decipher who's the bad guy in that drama but they do you know and I appreciate their their funny edits where they'll show you know someone crying and then they cut to the other guy and see how they're reacting and things like that and I love that the guy's the just like music. deciding between an apple and an orange like hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah literally he's like oh, I mean, a woman is sobbing so, yeah yeah it's like I, they, you know, they only ever see each other maybe like one or two days out of the week and maybe not hey, at Sarah, all. Sarah, can I steal you away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I yeah, steal yeah. you away from You would do great on it. You already know the terminology <laughs> and the language. That's a big thing, yes. Can I steal away? Oh, actually, we've just been, can we have two more minutes? Oh, but I haven't, you know, it's like all that. Mm -hmm. And also, <laughs> I watch The Bachelorette and Bachelor, right? So it is fun to see the differences of how men are, you know, behave in that situation versus women and, you know, and What's it's not always... You know, I mean, What's there's the not big... a huge difference, but I think the, like, men, um, there's some precedent, I think, also with The Bachelor that, like, there have been bachelors in the past that have just been villainized because they're assholes. Yeah. <laughs> so I think yeah. there's a lot of them being, like, I like being so bland because they can't say anything, but they're also probably not, they don't probably don't have much to say. Are they that smart? I don't no, no. I mean, yeah, I think much to say. <laughs> they're trying to say things like, oh, I totally understand. But they have nothing to like contribute to the conversation other than like mm -hmm. saying what they think they should say. So there's a lot of that. But I mean, for the most part, everybody's just a terrible person. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my summary. Love is Blind? Oh, no, I haven't. That's Love is Blind the is worth it. Oh, really? It's okay. on Oof. Netflix. Uh -huh. It's only, I want to say like four, six episodes. Oh, okay. That's pretty manageable. It's so, I mean, it is psychotic. Oh, it's God. actually, like, they keep calling it the experiment. Um, <laughs> it is, I guess. The great experiment where they <laughs> don't let people see each other until they get engaged. Like, they wow. have to get engaged, sight unseen, just by communicating in pods. It is oh nuts. And honestly worth every single moment it's okay. bananas you, you will uh -huh. you will enjoy it <laughs> because that is also one of the shows that like oh this is just now we're just fucking with people <laughs> right this is right. totally the producers pulling st strings to make like this show happen sure versus like people signing up to present themselves as right right <laughs> No, this that's important. Yeah, it's it's fun to, I think, see the, like, appreciate the production at work. You're like, wow, really, uh, puppet masters here that, yeah. <laughs> that have found <laughs> themselves in an interesting situation. Um, 
Yeah, and then I know that Too Hot to Handle is the other one that's oh, recently yeah. hit the Netflix airwaves. I haven't seen that either, but... I haven't seen that. Seen I don't know. That. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it on the internet. I saw people buzzing about the trailer. Mm, okay. I don't know if it's worth it. I mean, I won't watch anything anymore, honestly. I mean, I'll, I'll probably watch Love is Blind because you sold me on it, but uh, yeah. some of yeah, these other good. things, it's like I can't possibly... Yeah. I'm do done. it even though i'm okay i'm okay without it. content mm-hmm. for a while <laughs> yes i can yes. just wa- i just want to watch tiktok and whatever mm-hmm. sketches and videos my friends are putting out perfect <laughs> on twitter that's and plenty. instagram that's enough for me <laughs> yeah i mean tiktok can go on for hours so it's plenty TikTok of content is wild but you what just... were you sorry yeah you just keep swiping out sure exactly well what i wanted to ask what you were filming because you have your beautiful set Oh, um, I was filming, my friend is a producer at a beauty channel on YouTube, so I did a little interview. Nice. Talking about, I'm usually, I mean, I'm not wearing makeup right now, but I don't know, a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people make jokes about, like, having a lot of Zoom-based body dysmorphia. (laughs) (laughs) So we're forced to kind of really confront what we look like on camera. Yeah, but, like, I've been not really wearing makeup unless I have to, like, be on camera, like, truly, like, shoot something like that. And I feel like I've made peace with my face a little bit more. I was like, oh, this is, like, just what I look like. Yeah. (laughs) Instead of just cringing at it and apologizing for it all the time, like, oh, I'm so sorry. (laughs) You're looking at Ed. No, not at all. (laughs) It's like, oh, this is just what I look like that's and that's okay that's good enough <laughs> yeah of course I mean that's the that's the, the healthiest way to go about it I feel like yeah I've I've definitely um you know I still zoom in the morning for work and um you know I'll just I'm terrible but I like I don't like to wake up early so even some something as early as you know 9 30 I'm like ah, I'm gonna roll out of bed like right before yeah you know, I'll try to wash my face, da, da, da. but I took a shower in the morning the other day and I got on like right after it. I, and so I was just kind of like, I hadn't really brushed my hair. <laughs> or it was like, it was, <laughs> but it was kind of just like, you know, asymmetrical. There wasn't a lot going on. And I was like, huh, it's a style. It's I a guess. Look. Yeah. I was like, well, I appreciate my coworkers, you know, just kind of rolling You're with young. this. You're I don't think it, they, you know. <laughs> you know, I don't think they really care, but who knows? Um, but yes, it is totally fine. I mean, what, are the, what do we expect? We're supposed to do hair and makeup every day. Yeah, During that's this time. not going to happen. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do, you know, I, I kind of miss the, the ritual. So I still put on makeup sometimes, you know, and it's kind of fun. I mean, I do it for podcast stuff or I'll do it for, um, you know, like if I'm feeling like, oh, you know, today might be nice to like take a little break and do like lotion or you know a lot of a lot yeah. of uh extra things and that can be kind of fun the it skincare feels like. routine yeah. slather it up in lotions do and it. potions serums <laughs> serums yeah learning about yeah. serums and hyaluronic acid is uh, yes. a word get, that gets thrown around okay there's like a oh, uh-huh. there's a b a's there's all kinds of acids cool yeah glycolic acid Lactic Ooh. acid, all good acids, all for the face. Oh, Can't be oh. using all of them together, but you have, you know, some are for the morning, some are for the night. Beautiful. Glycolic acid's nice. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. I'll look into it. Yeah, I definitely, uh, the, the idea of putting acid on it's the face exfoliate. is always, oh, okay. It's like a, if you use it in a cleanser, wow, okay. <laughs> if you okay, get deep. a cleanser um, with glycolic acid mm-hmm. and you um, wash your face, it like also exfoliates because you don't want to exfoliate like with abrasively. Okay, oh, like remember that beads. like apricot like exfoliator thing oh. that everyone had with like, it was like really harsh, like. It felt rocky and pebbly, and people would just like scrub their face. It was like very. I 90s. missed that trend. Okay, okay, oh, got it. Sierra, your oh, your youth. <laughs> it's like so refreshing. But well, you know, yeah. Let me tell you, every girl who times, had yeah. like an LA looks like crispy bang uh, <laughs> in the nineties. Good. Fucked with this apricot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> maybe like we should bring Saint it back. Ives, a Saint Ives apricot scrub, oh. and we just scrub that on our faces, and it's so bad. You have to gently exfoliate. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. That sounds like quite. You know, beauty is pain, mm-hmm. but a little too far, kind of thing. Too much pain. We're learning. We're learning to undo all the things uh, in the '90s uh, that right. we thought were. 
correct. They were wrong. They were wrong. <laughs> oh the yes. Whole time. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm interested to see in the future. Like, what do you think would be some beauty trend that's happening right now that like is going to be outdated, like pretty soon? <laughs> I feel like the um, I think like when people look back at like the way we contoured, it was like, oh wait, so like. Did everyone just look like a drag queen all the time? We're like, like yeah. kind of, yeah. That's important, yeah. <laughs> you know. You everyone gotta... was just like, we all have to try to have this one face. <laughs> yeah, and we just would chisel uh-huh. it with um, <laughs> paints <laughs> until we got there. <laughs> right, right. You just, yeah, you paint it on because nobody can tell two D and three D. I mean, even especially now with Zoom, now you just Zoom. put a cardboard cutout of yourself you can get away honestly I wish I could zoom like that I had like the zoom call and they wanted me to turn on my video and I was like I mean I'm here I'm listening (laughs) do I have to (laughs) right you're like just trust just I'm 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 participating (laughs) I'm present yeah I mean there's a chance if if I was in like a big one you know when I we watch all these tiktoks or these young kids are on it so it's like this they're in school and they're mm-hmm. always like, oh, do this, like, to pretend you're in class when your professor is talking. And I'm like, you know, I yeah. I could see that being very, very tempting. Because like <laughs> there's, like, 30 the people in there or something if they're, you know, a big grid. I, I feel like you could do that if you recorded yourself and, like, you know, engaging, listening yeah. with your background and mm-hmm. then set it up on a on an iPad, <laughs> a second and then put it, screen. Yeah, put it in front of the Zoom, um, and then just meet yourself, and it's like you are present. You know? Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> you were yeah. Present that's for class. like it's going the extra mile. Just, I think you deserve <laughs> to take a break from school for a minute there. <laughs> very, very smart. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It's it's a uh, it's all these things are are great, and I am excited to see you know how we look back on this time, and then you know contouring and no pants and all the things that that we're doing yeah oof you know what's wild though what is kind of like the fashions are so 90s and it's like I already lived through that once it is blowing my mind (laughs) what's something that you did not uh want to see come back like the french cut bikini bottoms Oh, yeah, 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 The yeah, really, yeah. like, high weight, you know what I mean? Where I've it's like a, a V, of yeah. and then oh, it goes right, up, right. and then it's just yeah, kind of yeah. thin. It's like, who is that? That is truly ugly. It's heinous. Yeah, and and it's I remember... Like so much trouble. <laughs> looking at it just right out of the 90s, like, I can't believe we did that. That's criminal. <laughs> and it's back, and You're it's like, shocking. We're back. Uh-huh. And just, you know, like um, a matching spandex set. So it'll be kind of like a, a kind of sports bra looking top mm-hmm. that is matched with a high-waisted bike short. Also Ooh, of yeah, spandex. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's sure. the real. Why with not? a fanny pack. Straight. I mean, my mom wore oh, that. My mom wore that in the mm-hmm. 90s. Just running around town with a baseball cap. Also back. Also back. And a scrunchie? You know? Oh, my God. I can't tell what year uh, it is. Right. It's super weird. I And every, like, movie that's, like, coming-of-age movie is all either placed in the past or has the is, like, weirdly styled as if it's a different decade. Like, definitely 80s and yeah. a lot of 90s. And I feel like <laughs> it's like, whoa. And then people and then the kids bring in that because they're like, well, I just want to look like I'm in, you know, Stranger Things or whatever. And you're like, okay. <laughs> okay. But it's also... You know, that's the past, but also Stranger Things. <laughs> oh, my God. But, like, you know, but, yeah. a camisole with, like, a stripe, you know, a skinny stripe. Oh. Uh, so, so Yes, 90s. that's right. Those are really in. It's good. It's good. You know, we just don't – we want to be anywhere but here and now, honestly. I think yeah. No one I'm wants learning. to actually be present for what – yeah. No. The artist is not no, present. Thanks. <laughs> um, but speaking of, do you have any – you know, this is sort of – the time we get into the positivity hour. Yeah, you're like, Danielle, second turn it half on. of the hour. Okay. Um, well, you know, I mean, you're obviously a very funny, bring in all the reality show things. But yeah, if you have any, you know, 
sort of things that you've learned either during quarantine or through the years of being a comedian that helps you cheer up or um, gets through the day? <laughs> things that I have learned. Oof. Oh, man. <laughs> Simple question, you know, just summarize your just, whole life. Right. You know, um, up to this moment, this day, um, your whole life has been leading <laughs> yeah. here. I, when I moved into my place, um, in my room, I put a desk and I just started adding stuff to it, like bags of arts and crafts supplies or books and just Oh, oh! now I have Christmas decorations. I don't really know what to do them here. I'll just like put them on top of the desk or under the desk or around the desk. And it just slowly turned into a mountain of stuff, basically making half of my room completely unusable. Just like this huge pile of shit. And I cleaned that off. I cleaned out my desk. I have a desk now. I have, I'm not commandeering the living Congratulations. room anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to right it's huge but like literally like this desk behind me this whole table this decorative table was like in the space where my mountain of shit was and now I have space That's... for this beautiful background yeah. and I have a desk me next too. to me it's a big area just was overtaken by stuff and so I learned that if you put your mind to it you can do it Beautiful, poetic. But yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I definitely have a lot of, I'm not the cleanest person. And I, um, you know, I, I think I'm pretty good. Like, it's weird because I'll have certain things where I'm like, I got to make sure the dishes are clean. That's sort of where I want there to be space. But then in my room, I've got clothes everywhere. Yeah, no, no. Oh my and gosh. I just like create a mountain of clothing. Mm -hmm. And so then for some reason, I'm totally fine with that. But then in the kitchen, I'm like, uh, can we make sure the glasses are like stacked? You know? Yeah. It's like, like um, <laughs> this is, we actually have them all facing out and not <laughs> yeah, in. Exactly. It's just... Can we do logo out for our mugs or <laughs> not that bad? But yeah, I, I mean, I, I've been messy my whole life. And, you know, I thank all the people who have lived with me and haven't totally committed uh, murder or suicide. But um, it is, it is, a, it's a tough thing. But I think, you know, especially now because we really have to live in our spaces, yeah. it probably is more motivating. Do you like to listen to stuff when you clean or are you kind of like a, you know, I don't know, listen to music or do anything extra or just only the cleaning? I can listen to stuff. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Sure. Because I, I, I've been really into that. I think that helps me not think about it as such of a chore. Yeah. Because it's like your ears aren't occupied. Once I'm really just, just like, like in the groove. On. Yeah. But I mm -hmm. think like the first big, because it, it's so big and so massive and it's like, oh, this giant mess, how am I even going to begin? But then just to like, okay, one bag at a time, one thing at a time, and then you start to see the progress and it's like, oh, this is yeah manageable and doable. And I don't know, it made yeah. me feel good. It made me feel pretty like, okay, we're getting somewhere, we're doing some things and felt good to write at my desk and I was like, yeah, I'm motivated Ooh, to yeah. write. This is where I write and not just in my bed or like in the living room where I'm mm. like bothering people and or not being motivated because I'm in my bed. <laughs> but it's for sleeping. <laughs> oh, right. Right, right. It's like, huh, I feel like it's comfy enough where I can go to bed where I sleep. Yeah. <laughs> that is a thing that people are saying, you know, designate a space or whatever. But um, I also got a uh, little, because I have a table desk mm -hmm. that's pretty much just a surface, right? Mm -hmm. And so then when I had like stacks of paper and stuff, it's all kind of just like on the desk. But yeah. then I got from Ikea like a little drawer thing nice. that I can slide under the desk. And that's been revolutionary. Oh, like it's a filing Helmer. cabinet almost? Kind yeah, of it's a, it's it's luckily because I didn't want to get a filing cabinet because I don't really do that. But it's like just little drawers. Nice. So they're all like this size. Awesome. Sorry, just like a, you know, tiny little drawers. But it's good for like, okay, I'll stick like these pens in there because I don't need them on my desk all the time. Yeah. And that's been like super helpful, even though I still have crap on my desk. But <laughs> but yeah, it's like nice to kind of be like, oh, I'm an adult. I can store things now. Yes. The organization of storage, having designated spaces right. for designated things, that's huge. And like, I think just like when I moved into my place, like I had gone from living in San Francisco where I was sharing like an apartment with like three other people 
So, and oh, wow. you know, and I was yeah. just like going out every night. So it was like literally just like, oh, it's a place I shower and like keep my clothes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your locker room. Yeah, in the city. <laughs> I was just in and out, did not care. Like nothing was organized. It was again, piles of clothes, like either on the bed or on the floor <laughs> in the closet. <laughs> Nice. And then uh-huh. I went to my mom's because after my accident, and so it was like now I was in like a small room with like all of just stuff, you know, so just piles on piles of things because like I had lived in an apartment. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. And then I moved in my place, and so nothing had like a place. It wasn't like, oh, okay, mm. well, I'm going to set up the wall that I had in my bedroom over here with the same organization system. I just <laughs> Right, right. anyone like, I was like mean? I guess things go in this area and so and then no sure. things the grand plans turned into mountains of stuff <laughs> yeah that's very natural I I definitely I also find that it's like hard to buy more stuff to organize stuff if you feel like you have a lot of stuff already you know yeah. it feels counterintuitive yeah so like even buying these drawers I was like I don't know, because what if I want to move? And then is that another thing I got to bring with me after having just moved? You know, and so it definitely felt a little weird. I but get overwhelmed I know that's part of it. by the choice. Sure. You so know, I'm like, oh, there's infinite options with the internet. You can just keep searching and searching and searching. And then it's like, <laughs> well, actually, do I want a drawer? Or do I want this chest? Or like, you're like, what? <laughs> Right? Am I a chest person? Right? You're like, well, now they have a system that is comprised of ropes and pulleys. And it's like, should I do that? What? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Things are going exactly. crazy. <laughs> just like looking at. Yeah. You just so get deeper and deeper. <laughs> and you're like, what was I looking for? <laughs> it's so hard. I mean, even now. Yeah. It's just like, okay, well, then maybe I should watch this YouTube video on how to like re you know build this thing or like you know it's, it yeah. just feels like oh well maybe that lifestyle is the one I want and right I don't know and then is this the best deal or can I wait a week and then maybe they're going to be cheaper you know it's just yeah am I a person it's that hard. seals rustic furniture that I've refinished with wax like I don't know how did I get on this part of the internet you know? <laughs> yeah that's that's the most yeah that's a very uh common thing <laughs> I mean I even going down like every craft that we can do now that we are home it's like oh maybe I should get into resin art because that's a thing <laughs> that's a that thing. looks really pretty and you know maybe I could make a comb out of a resin and flowers like it's like what who am I thinking <laughs> I am, am? I? who is this for <laughs> oh we I can make know. gifts like this set of 50 you can make <laughs> 50 right I can make 50 of them great perfect exactly what I need <laughs> oh but that's tricky but I'm glad that you know the a little cleanup goes a long way yeah um and then how about uh your sort of general I don't know figuring out the schedule of your life you know, I know that's very, Ugh. personally, it's hard for me because I need a lot of external, you know, discipline yeah. sometimes. But I don't know if you've learned any fun things there. Man, I've learned, you know, I've learned that it's okay to not be so hard on yourself. I think that I was very, the initial push to like stay um busy and productive Mm -hmm. was really took a toll on me because I feel like I'm a pretty busy and productive person like outside of this like most nights were spent performing stand-up um I was like getting to a point where I was like shooting a lot and had like meetings and auditions and like self you know what I mean just like my days were kind of full doing work And it was good. And it was like, okay, well, I have to like fly out on this day. And you know what I mean? Like I had stuff. And so to just go from that to be like, well, I have all this time, but I feel like I should be occupying it with like productive things. Now all of a sudden, okay, do I have to like start an IG live show or a Zoom show or do this or do like it just like it it stressed me out (laughs) in a way where I just was like, I don't want to be forced to create in this way. <laughs> I feel like there is a yeah. gun to my head and there's a space <laughs> right, race. Right, right. There is a digital space, <laughs> space race to go viral and I don't want right, any right. part of it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's so true. A digital space race to go viral is a great way to put it. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. How am I supposed to figure out Instagram Live when everybody else is like, you know. Literally, know, Instagram Live trying to wouldn't just keep let their me lives go together. live. <laughs> they would not let me go live one day. <laughs> my friend Madison and I. Oh, no. It says my internet connection is unstable. Internet. Sorry. Oh, no. Okay. It's okay. I, I can still see you. It's just a little lower. Okay. Oh, okay. I think you're back. Is it back? Okay. I think so. Is it good? I think so. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the first, like, once we knew quarantine um, was happening at least until March 15th, or not March mm-hmm. 15th, like, uh, oh, yeah. for two weeks when... <laughs> When Garcetti said, oh, it's just two weeks, two weeks in March. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, we were like, so young. That's so cute. That's so <laughs> Wow. We, we <laughs> it's just so wild that people really thought, like, yeah, 14 days and we're t- <laughs> yeah. a global right, pandemic, right, right. 14 days. You know, Italy is just like, people are dying, <laughs> dying right, right, right. every like, day. You know, maybe dying. just, yeah. 14 days, that's it. Um, <laughs> but. Um, my friend Madison and I, she was like, let's go live every day. We'll have like a talk show. It'll be at like, you know, 11 a.m. Um, <laughs> and Instagram, we try to go live one day and Instagram was like, too many people are trying to go live right now. <laughs> they put <laughs> a cap again. on it? Oh my God. Please that's try. So they just like did not have the servers to handle all of the traffic of everyone just trying to right. be live. That's true. I mean, it is, it's remarkable that, that it's been able to work as it has, you know, just because everybody's tuning in and people are like broadcasting video, which is really hard, yeah. you know. Um, well, I'm glad that but, they're doing, yeah. like, they finally figured out the interface for uh, laptops and desktops. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Because before that. you could they were just... look at pictures on mm, your laptop and desktop right. but you couldn't messenger you right, couldn't yeah, watch yeah. live stories were really spotty but now okay, they've like fully upgraded the interface to work with laptops and desktops Changing yeah the game. that's good <laughs> i mean i have watched a live from my desktop you know, it's nice <laughs> or my laptop or whatever. you don't have to yeah, hold yeah. your phone up i'm tired yeah. of holding my phone i'm, Ugh, I'm tired my wrists my wrists need they, a break yeah yeah um, What's a wrist yeah, surgeon I, I mean, called? I think I... Oh. The person that operates on the wrist. I know an orthopedic is, you know, the foot. Oh, right. And the knees. Yeah, I don't know. Right? What's an arm Wrist, joints, card, arm, arms. Maybe I don't it know. is Maybe still just ortho. Like a generic Perhaps bone. it's still orthopedic. Who knows? Yeah, it's just like kind of My bones at large. My cousin is literally like, I think, a wrist surgeon. <laughs> I'm so rude. Okay. <laughs> I need to ask my cousin Nikki. <laughs> Yeah, so what is it that they call you now? So it is what they call you because everyone, this pandemic is going to keep you busy. <laughs> everyone <laughs> right, with right. their wrist-based trauma I from know. scrolling and going live, doing a front-facing camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our wrists are not cutting out for this. We didn't selfie. work out our wrists. <laughs> <laughs> our wrists just weren't built for this. <laughs> yeah, I know. We got to do workouts. We got to stay strong. This is wrong this is the workout yeah, but that's good um mm-hmm. no I think the yeah I think once I kind of like gave myself time and permission to be like angry and let it go it's like okay yeah, yeah. this is what we do now we get up <laughs> I make I made I've been making ginger turmeric lemon shots <gasps> You know, is that like a sort of detox thing? I had kind of heard of something like that not before, like a, just lemon and ginger. Not like a detox, like more just like immunity boosting shots. So like turmeric and ginger, garlic Ooh. as well. Those are all like really like good like anti-inflammatories or like good for like your immunity, like in your immune system nice. and stuff like that. And like, it's like, well, you know, that's important. I got... <laughs> <laughs> but it's the kind of shit yeah, like, I would great. never do that before. That's not part sure. of my daily routine, but I have the time. So, <laughs> right, right, right. It. You're not normally chopping up a bunch of turmeric. I'm normally truly not. But yesterday, yeah, I, you, you know, I scrubbed a bunch of fresh turmeric, put it in the oh, blender, wow. <laughs> hit it with a mm-hmm. magic bullet. Now I'm freezing it so I can chop it up into cubes. Oh, and then wow. every time I need to make a batch for the week. In. I pop it in with some coconut milk, some ginger, a little black pepper, 
some orange wow. juice, um, and uh, some lemon juice. Shake it That's up, great. and then those, you know, drink it, toss it back, toss it back toss every it back. day. <laughs> but it's just like I don't know, doing that. It's like okay, I can do that, and like my yeah, roommate, I love doing that stuff. Uh-huh. My roommate G has been really good about keeping our house on track. That's honestly like because I have a oh. mom. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no G is the one. house mom, uh-huh. but she she's like, okay, every day we start making dinner at five, <laughs> mm-hmm. and we're on a schedule. Each one of us cooks mm-hmm. once. You know, we go. There's three of us, so we go through two rounds, and then one night Great. we order out. Oh, how nice! Yes, yeah, very very egalitarian. You've got you know nobody feels like they're carrying too much burden. Hopefully, yeah. Um, yeah, that's so great. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love doing those kinds of like, oh, I guess I have to make this special little thing, you know, whether obviously I haven't gone into baking, but like <laughs> the shot thing is cool. I, I'll definitely look into that. Yeah. I feel like that's I can a send you some fun, recipes. Like, project. Oh, yes, yeah. please do. We can, uh, you know, you can get your, you can bottle it and, and make it a business, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once uh, yes, start, I am know, a lifestyle back influencer. To the factories. I'll rebrand. Yeah. Yes, I, I can see it now. Um, and Danielle, and, yeah, my whole brand is like, like, did you know you could clean your desk and like wellness shots? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. It's just like, here's a life hack. Desk. You can have one. Yeah. <laughs> it could be clean. Um, <laughs> but I like, yeah, It's it's been weird, I think, too, just like the pressure of, you know, well, what can we do now that we technically have more time? But honestly, like the first when we were really fresh in this situation, I was like, so sucked into the news and like facetiming family and trying to like that honestly i probably had less time just because i felt very was like wasting busy you know every conversation i have with people is like an hour hour and a half (laughs) two hours and it's like like, i guess we just needed to get this out (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i mean it's really hard to end stuff because you're just like uh i don't have to go anywhere but (laughs) but i do have to do something else (laughs) Right, right, right. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely good to hear from people because I think we're all kind of like, okay, or are people writing their novel or whatever, you know, silly thing everyone's saying to do when you really, you know, yeah, when it might not be the right time. Um, I think the productivity yeah. trap is like, I think for me, like, okay, I figured out my desk. So that has inspired me to want to write more. And come up with silly ideas. I think like along the lines of like TikTok and people making just silly stuff because they find it funny or they think it's amusing. I'm more creatively inclined to do that stuff or like put down that idea and be like, why not actually? Yeah, Instead yeah. of like shooting down all my ideas because they're not like the perfect ideas. Like how about oh, okay. that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> Right, yeah. I mean, because then that, that can be tough because yeah. then, you know, what do we put out if we're just complete? I mean, it, it has been, I think, interesting kind of, and I don't know how you feel about this, but I, but it's sort of like with stand-up, that was kind of a lot of where I feel like ideas germinated because it was like, okay, well, I can go out and do a joke about this, see if it works, and then maybe that turns into not a joke or it does or a mm-hmm. sketch or whatever you want to, yeah. you know, turn it into, but kind of finding that place to try things out and stuff is a little bit tricky but yeah you know, yeah not having that mm-hmm. feedback of an audience and being able to go to open mics or you know a workout right. room or something like that it's just oh excuse me sorry oh yeah no worries um yeah <laughs> I didn't hear anything um but yeah I think it's all you know it's all good. We're figuring it out. And I, I count like cleaning as productivity. Yeah. So, you know, okay. that's what it is. I think, yeah. Because yeah, it's like you did stuff and it had to happen one way or, the, or one way or another. So Yeah. I think for me, a lot of, I guess then, okay, if we're counting it as productivity, I think, I yeah, so. a lot of the productivity I've been focused on is cleaning and organizing and just, I been doing stand-up for um like five and a half years so like I (laughs) I've like devoted everything to it (laughs) sounds like a girlfriend whose boyfriend just dumped her and I'm like I gave him five and a half years of my life and 
and you just left. He just up Over and quit. He said, I got this new bitch named Rona and she can do shit you can't do. <laughs> right, right. But like what my whole life sided <laughs> situation. Has been stand up and like I've thrown everything at that and a lot of the things like I have given up are like in order to be like productive and successful in it, right? It's like I didn't have a clean room. I <laughs> like gained a ton of weight because I just was like eating out whenever. Just you know, what I mean, my odd uh, like I just wasn't keeping like actually a good schedule or taking care of myself. So now it's like, well, I have time to do that. So let's cool, yeah. Clean yeah. the house. I mean, yeah. And organize, There's a lot of parallels. Make the wellness uh-huh. shots, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> but like take the time to like do the things that I used to really enjoy and like to do. That I That's didn't great. have I used to not have time for because yeah. stand up and comedy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know I, I saw I witnessed your hustle with the you know, Danielle's on all the shows, you know, so I, I <laughs> You're I like we're that. in the writer's I, room. I You're still it. doing shows like a maniac. <laughs> I acknowledge, yeah, exactly. I was like, okay, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, no, I, I acknowledge your hard work and what you put in, but I like your, you know, um, parallels with the breakup. It is sort of like, you know, okay, now you get to get, uh, you know, you have to get to know yourself, mm-hmm. work on yourself, yeah. things like that, that I think are always, you know, maybe not enjoyable at first, but then it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, he didn't want me, so uh, I don't want him. <laughs> right, you know? But I mean, I think that's like truly, it's like I have to get to know myself without stand-up or stand-up as like I cool. knew it, Yeah. right? So, and that's yeah. oh. a little scary. <laughs> it is very scary. Sure, I know. What is <laughs> More than mean? a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree though. It is true. It is like we're so used to, I think, identifying with being stand-ups and being able to just sort of do this thing that kind of is always there in some form, even mm-hmm. if it's, you know, lame, terrible open mics. Yeah. Like it doesn't <laughs> but, um, matter if it's like yeah. I would kill to be like at a shitty open mic. <laughs> I know. Just like I know now. awful, terrible, <laughs> like Sal's right. comedy hole kind of open I'm sorry. Mic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen. Oh, it sounds yeah, yeah. amazing right now, but <laughs> but I think Never. yeah, like being able to like face myself and figure out who am I outside of that, and like yeah, sweet. What are my hobbies and interests? <laughs> am I puzzle girl? Yeah. What do we do for girl? fun? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a really uh, big reckoning. <laughs> um. But yeah, I mean, I know we're kind of wrapping up here, so I don't want to keep you too long. But if there's anything, um, any last tips of positivity or also just plug in where people can find you on the, on the, uh, I don't know, cloud, cloud. (laughs) Instagram live (laughs) on the the singularity. Is that where? Yeah. (laughs) When we all upload into the big cloud in the sky, you know, (laughs) literally, um, Okay, uh, positivity. I follow a lot of fox accounts. I love foxes. I think okay. they're the cutest. First, I animals. was thinking you followed like Fox News to like make fun of them or something. You know, you're like, Seriously? I follow them just to realize that I <laughs> that they're insane. No, please Which, don't. Yeah, if you're be. watching a bunch of blonde bobbleheads, you are tuned on to the wrong Fox. <laughs> that is the wrong. Fox. <laughs> right we're talking instagram red, we're talking noses. red foxes we're talking gray foxes we're talking Ooh. white foxes all the foxes um juniper fox oh i love her she's really cute there's like this other like cute. fox rescue honestly just go on instagram and search fox and you'll find so uh, search fox rescue of... actually and then because that's mm. the people that like take in foxes that have been rescued from like furriers or like breeders and they just like oh wow i didn't even rehabilitate know. them and they show them playing and feeding and it's just i love the foxes they're so cute Ugh, and then you're like great. i want one and then you're like absolutely not <laughs> You see how much work it is. So, and you're like, yeah. no Many way. stages of uh-uh. fox grief. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. I, I, I love a good animal Instagram. I lo- yeah, I know. I love following animal instas. 
animal. It's so peaceful. Little bunnies. I like Cinderblock, that fat gray cat. You remember that video of him in uh, on a water, on a treadmill submerged in water? And he didn't want to do the treadmill, so he was like off of it and just had one paw on the treadmill. Oh, and he's just a I big fat baby. This, can... <laughs> His name is Cinderwalk. Oh, I love <laughs> he's it. He's a chunky so chunker. <laughs> I love him. What a smart boy. <laughs> I love that. Just, you know, taking it in stride. Also, cute. if you're, I know, I'm like, none of these are my things. I'm like, if you like musical theater and you love musical theater, um, the Sondheim, it was Stephen Sondheim's 90th birthday oh, yeah. this past weekend. And uh, a bunch of just amazing musical theater performers, like Broadway stars and like movie stars who, you know, love the stodge. They, <laughs> they perform songs they did like basically like a, a zoom concert <laughs> which is amazing because oh you get to see God. people's yeah. homes which is the most vulnerable thing Ooh, someone can that's show you <laughs> um and wow. i mean bernadette peters patty lapone but really um the highlight was ladies who lunch okay meryl streep okay in a rope okay. wow Mm-hmm. I did see screen grabs. I uh, did not even know it was happening, and so then I didn't watch it. But then there's a recording. It's towards the end. Yeah, you can look out. it up on YouTube. Okay. It's like two hours nice. long, which is like a great thing to kind of have in the background. But also, cool. it's Perfect. if you watch the last like 15, 20 minutes, you'll catch you'll catch the heavy hitters. Okay, that's when they bring out the big guns. <laughs> Thanks for that insider tip. Yeah. That is very key. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, we'll yeah, but you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. <laughs> yeah. At Diva Deluxe, no E at the end. I do Zoom comedy shows and Instagram live comedy. I do comedy wherever they'll have me virtually now. That's the thing. So, yeah. Amazing. Hit me up. Uh, DM me if you want me to be on your show. I will gladly do it. Thankful for the stage time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes yeah awesome well thank you again for doing the podcast and bringing all the great uh you know wellness shot information i'm gonna give you that recipe you know it's beauty great. tips yes i'm ready yeah Korean yeah so care. I'll be, uh, okay just you're gonna yeah next time you see me serum gonna be so detoxed and <laughs> non-inflammatory <laughs> i won't be inflamed Yeah, no, it's important. I I do love that stuff. So thank you. Hey, so thanks for listening to that episode. That was Danielle Perez, hilarious comedian. Uh, Make sure to watch more of her stuff to give yourself a laugh during these fun times. Um, Also, because it's one of the first episodes of May, I just want to give a shout out because it is APAHM officially, which is um, Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. That's right. I know what that acronym is. Um, But yeah, it's really cool. I know we talk a lot about Asian American stuff on this podcast and I'm Asian American and you might be too, or if you're not, you know, still fun for the whole family. So yeah, just uh, hope you guys are going to have another great month indoors and uh, take care of yourselves. Thanks. Bye.